We are now just 13 days away from the midterm election. Joining us from New York is NBC News national political correspondent Steve Kornacki. So glad to see you. You too. All right, Steve, we got several big races here in Michigan. Let's start at the top of the ticket now. So back in August, it looked like Governor Whitmer would easily win re-election, but recent polls show this race is really tightening. What do you see in those numbers? Yeah, I mean, this tightening has been surprising to some people, and it's been pretty significant. I mean, put the numbers on it here. Middle of August, here's what the poll average looked like. Gretchen Whitmer had a lead of nearly 18 points over Tudor Dixon. Look at where it is now. Whitmer still leads. The margin is basically three points. So nearly a 15-point gain for Tudor Dixon since the summer. What has been driving this race, and presumably what has been driving the Dixon's comeback in the polls? Take a look. Most recent Emerson poll in Michigan asked voters what is the number one issue on your mind as you make up your mind the economy and inflation is what they asked about and look at this by a two to one margin it towers over any other issue certainly we've seen Joe Biden he has a low approval rating in Michigan his approval ratings on the economy are low and the economy just given its condition given voters pessimism center stage in this race and I think is a significant part of why that race is tightening in Michigan all right, so redistricting has given Democrats a chance to win the seat representing Grand Rapids for the first time since the 70s. How is this race in the third district shaping up right now? Yeah, let's dive inside the map here in Michigan. You're seeing the governor's ranch up there, but let's switch over to the House races here. Here's the 3rd District, and of course, John Gibbs, the Republican who defeated Peter Meyer, uh, who, the freshman who had voted to impeach Donald Trump, defeated him in that primary. It's an interesting dynamic here because take a look at this. How did the 3rd District vote? Of course, they did redistricting this year, so the lines are different this year. Under these new lines, the 3rd District district would have gone for Joe Biden by eight points over Donald Trump. Redistricting made the third district much more fertile ground for Democrats. Democrats have believed that Gibbs is a weaker candidate than Meyer was. Democrats, in fact, spent some money trying to help Gibbs get the Republican nomination. They are making a calculation that Gibbs is a beatable candidate in this district, which has been redrawn much more favorably to Democrats. You know, under the old lines, the third district actually went for Trump by three points so it's a very significant shift here yeah sure is that'll be interesting so you mentioned abortion earlier on your list it of course is on the ballot in michigan with prop three how big of a motivator is abortion for voters right now yeah, you saw it. it was number two on the list there in terms of top issue. Uh, also, uh, look at it this way. Let's go back to that here. Uh, asking folks here, the fact that it's on the ballot and the fact of the Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade, does that make you much more likely to vote in the 2022 election? And look at this. Basically, half the respondents in the poll said, yes, it does. About 43% said it would make no difference, but nearly half said it would make them more likely to vote. Now, of course, it doesn't tell you exactly which way they're going to vote on it. We've seen some polling on this ballot initiative, this constitutional amendment in uh, in Michigan. We've seen some polling that has it somewhat close. The, the, the supporters seem to outnumber the uh, opponents, at least in the polling right now, but by a relatively competitive margin. So it seems to be a big motivating factor, maybe motivating folks on both sides of the issue. Yeah, lots of things to be decided. Okay, so any over under on just how late of a night it's going to be? We're expecting it's going to be a long one. Yeah, I've been telling folks, you know, we used to say an election night, I call it election week now, and there's a possibility nationally when you look at some of these races, could be election month. Yeah, could be. All right, Steve Kornacki, we really appreciate it. Thanks so much. You got it.